Alec Mineko wasn't alone, of course. Altogether, about 200,000 Poles were brought to Britain to reshape their lives in 43 different hostels run by the National Assistance Board. Gradually, the camps emptied. That was the whole idea, as the Poles emigrated to start again or simply merged into the British way of life. Of the many, only about 470 are left, and they all live here at Ilford Park. It used to be an American army hospital, and the hundred buildings are functional but little more. But there's one constant reminder that Ilford Park isn't exactly what its name implies, a sort of rural retreat. The barbed wire fence which surrounds it is ugly enough, but the local businessmen who play golf only a few yards away are the most vivid contrast possible between two completely different ways of life which exist side by side but somehow rarely seem to meet. There are three government departments responsible for the camp, although most of the work comes under the National Assistance Board. These authorities are responsible for welfare, food and clothing, and for providing heat, light and a roof. What they can't always provide is the will to meet the challenge of the bigger world outside. In many cases, they don't even try. Too many people carry invisible scars. And in this community where they're understood, where their memories are appreciated, they found a new sort of stability. Here they feel perhaps as self-sufficient as they ever will be. If they want to shop, for instance, they don't have to go very far. The co-op has it all in Polish right on their back door. And so many people here are content to live day by day under the wing of the National Assistance Board and the camp warden, Mr. William Gardner. We have in the hostel two groups, the non-communal group and the communal group. The non-communal group uh, pay a sum uh, for the flat from two to four rooms uh, from their income. They look after themselves in the normal way. The communal group, dependent on their income, uh, pay towards the board and lodging. By communal, you mean that they have all their meals that in, is so. in the same place? That is so. They are provided with board and lodging and they have their meals in the main dining hall. Do you encourage the Polish people here to leave and get jobs if they can? We, we have done so. Uh, those who can work are working. Of course, there's much more to Ilford Park than just barrack blocks. As a self-contained community, it has its own kitchens, which cater for the 320 Poles who eat together in the canteen. Most of the food's Polish, and there's always plenty of it. The kitchen staff are all Polish too, and they earn about five pounds a week. It's enough for the odd shopping expedition into town, and at least one spends what's left on football pools. For the rest, this is the communal side of camp life, and those who choose it get full board and lodging free, and about a pound a week in pocket money. Those who don't live as families in their own rooms and they pay a nominal rent of about 30 shillings a week. The rules are simple and any difficulties or misunderstandings are ironed out by a special liaison committee. It's an arrangement which seems to work very well. Everyone's content and when it's time to relax there's a choice of television, billiards and Polish films twice a month in the camp cinema. Not much, perhaps, but enough to make the old ones feel there's no need for the attractions of the world outside. But above all, they have their memories, and like many Polish people, their devotion to the church is unswerving. Well, my name is Glazewski, but they usually call me here glass of whiskey because everybody knows at once who is coping with. Although I must say I'm not very spiritual myself. You know. You're the padre. Well, I'm the padre here in the camp since 1948. From your experience, would you say that this is a happy community at Ilford Park? I think so, yes. They are really happy here. It's due to different circumstances, but um, the first thing is that uh, the British government is really caring about them. I mean, they do the utmost to give them what they should have here. Uh, you must remember that it's an old folk home, so some of these people are really unable to go anywhere, blind, without legs, without hands. They are all depend dependents or actual people who served in the British Army during the war, and most of them are war casualties. 
But why are they so happy? They've all, most of them, and you yourself, have had horrifying experiences. Yes, the true. Well, what, uh, my philosophy is, what's the use of being gloomy? Uh, then you make your life uh, much more miserable. So in all my preachings, in all my behavior around here, I'm trying to point out that the only way to make the life uh, more cheery after all that experience they had is to smile to everything. There is a great deal of laughter, of course, and the happiness is infectious. These children may be English on paper, but their spontaneous gaiety has obviously been inherited from somewhere else. As for the teenagers, well, they're just teenagers. Their entertainment is completely universal. Elena and Vodek home for the holidays. She goes to school in Torquay and he in Newton Abbott. And they both have their own small rooms with pin-ups, a bed and a wardrobe. Their rooms are only about nine feet square, but they don't belong to anyone else. Here they can entertain whom they like. But if they want to meet English school friends, they usually go by bus four miles to the nearest coffee bar in town. They have to be at home in both worlds, keeping them separate. When the Poles first came to South Devon, there were 130 children in the camp. Now, only about 30 under the age of 16 are left. They're all bilingual and they speak Polish as fluently as the English they learned almost from birth. They go to local schools and a stranger would find it very difficult to pick them out from any of the local children. But they have a different future to face. Their parents may be content to stay where they are, but most of the children know that their future lies in Devon and beyond. But do they think of themselves as English or Polish? Well, you see, they have their parents here, and they started from the youth or from the childhood. And the very moment they finished school, we are pushing them out. Are it's they going to be Polish or English? No, English. They are English-born, and they will be English. Of course, they know that they are of English, uh, uh, of Polish uh, origin, but they are English citizens, you see. If you ask them who they are, they will say, well, I'm a Pole, but I'm a British citizen, and, and they are loyal to both countries. Does this make difficulties for them? In not at all. Not at all. They are really uh, at home here. But is it really as simple as all that? The children are not quite so sure, and living in two different worlds seems to have left its mark. Polish. Why? Well, because I've been brought up here, and uh, well, my parents are Polish, so I look upon myself as Polish. But aren't you really going to be English? I hope not. Why not? Well, you're, you're different, and I've been brought up in po sort of Polish, um, uh, you know, environment, like, so I consider myself to be Polish. I go to an English school where there's some Polish children as well, and English, and I think of myself as Polish. I think of myself as being Polish. Why? Well, I've, I'm in amongst Polish people all the time. The only time I see English people is outside the camp, going to town or somewhere, or school. So naturally, I think, I'm, think of myself as Polish. When I go to school, I feel English. When I say at home, I feel Polish. You really feel English at school? Yeah. Well, are you English or Polish? Polish. Well, um, I'm always with English people, and I'm speaking more English, in a way, during school time, like, because I go to school, you know, from 9 o'clock till 4, so it's mostly English, really. And I you tend to forget, you know, Polish-like, but I try not to.